time for some Clifton. Let's party. Ginger Runner. What is up, everybody? Ethan Newberry, the Ginger Runner here for another Ginger Runner review. Not just one, but deuce. It's a deuce drop. <laughs> I'm posting two reviews today. Uh, both shoes are from Hoka One One. You're currently watching my review of the Clifton 6. It's back in its sixth version. Yep, they're still making it. But in addition to my review of the Clifton 6 today, I also dropped my review of the Hoka One One Rincon. The reason I wanted to drop both of these reviews today is because I feel like these two shoes have a pretty good partnership going on. You're gonna wanna make sure that you watch both reviews, be able to determine if one of them will work for you, maybe both, maybe neither. So if you wanna watch this review, link is in the description, or just stick around and watch the review of the Clifton 6. So first, you know my history with the Hoka Clifton. The first version was one of my favorite road shoes for the longest time. I had a little bit of issue with it early on, but now years removed from that shoe, I miss it. I miss it terribly. I'm aware they reissued it. I have a pair. For some reason, it never quite felt like that original Clifton 1. Since then, they've come out with a number of different versions. Clifton 2, which we won't even talk about. Clifton 3 was an interesting remake. The Clifton 4 was the heavyweight champion of the Clifton series. Then came the Clifton 5, which I actually never reviewed because it was so frustrating. Not just the 5, but the 5 knit? stretch knit version of the Clifton. I, this just became so confusing because there were multiple versions of the Clifton and they all felt different. But enter in the Clifton 6. That long distance neutral road shoe from Hoka that's supposed to have a nice soft midsole material, plenty of durability through the upper, get you through those long training days, long races in comfort and cushioned glory. Well, I'll be the first to admit that the Clifton series got off track for multiple versions. This new version with a redesigned midsole material, redesigned outsole with flex grooves in different locations, redesigned upper with the material being a little bit softer, a little bit more pliable, a bit of additional width through the midfoot and forefoot, just a complete revisit to what makes the Clifton great. I'm happy to report back the Clifton 6 is back on my radar. There's lots new. I'm excited about a lot of it. There are some things that I dislike, of course, but I'm gonna get to all of that in today's review. We like to talk about the things that we like and dislike, starting as always with things that I like. It's back. Now bear with me. The Clifton 6 is not the Clifton 1, but I think it is some of the best parts of each of the Clifton series that we've seen to this point. The midsole's back to being a little bit softer while still holding some of its resiliency. The upper is accommodating. It's not as heavy as the previous version. It's just taking some of the best Clifton elements for the last five generations and putting them all into one package. What we have, uh, in my opinion, is a great shoe to go long distances comfortably in the way that the original Clifton did for me. We're getting there. The midsole, it's softer. So in the Clifton 5, Clifton 4, and Clifton 3, the midsole got stiffer, a lot more responsive, and kind of moved away from that original cushioned long distance trainer. The Clifton 6 is back to having a softer midsole while still retaining some of that pop. So it's gonna give those of you who enjoy a responsive ride joy, as well as those who prefer that cushioned ride, give you some joy as well. The weight, it's not light, but it is lighter. At 10.4 ounces in my size, size 11, that's 0.6 ounces lighter than version five and version four, which just makes me so happy to see that this shoe is finally going back to its lighter weighted roots. I know when we start talking about these fractions of ounces and just single digit grams and weight comparison, a lot of you roll your eyes. The reality is it all makes a difference. Uh, long runs, distance wise or time wise, you want as little weight hanging from the bottom of your legs, these giant pendulums as possible. So it's nice to see that they're finally shaving some weight off of the Clifton because it was getting a little, little hefty like myself. And finally, an improved fit. This is actually pretty exciting because the upper being redesigned, the material is different, it's a bit more forgiving. For those of you who have wider forefeet, you get a bit more millimeter width in there. Uh, it's just more adaptable to various foot types. We were getting really narrow with the Clifton series. For me, it ended up causing a lot of rubbing along the medial side of the forefoot, but with the Clifton 6, we're back to normal. Whatever that is, uh, it's just more comfortable. So the fit is getting dialed. We have some stitching here along the upper that's also tightening in that midfoot. Holding your foot down, holding your foot in. Nice work, Clifton 6. I'm bringing it back to what's good. That being said, it's not all tickle fits and mushroom trips. There are some things I dislike about the Clifton 6. Still narrow. While I did say that the fit is improved, and it is, it's not perfect. The shoe still has a ways to go in making this a comfortable shoe for a lot of people's feet. So interesting to see all these shoes continue to stay narrow. It's not like the whole shoe needs to be wide, but just having a little bit of extra room up front helps a lot. The shoe does that, but it still could go a little bit further. Some of Hoka's new trail shoes incorporate a flexible piece of fabric here across the midfoot and forefoot areas, giving an almost automatic sense of adjustability for each foot. It's a really interesting usage of materials I'll get to when I start reviewing the Evo Mafate and the Evo Speed Goat, but for this, it's wider than before, 
could be a little bit wider still and wait uh yes it is lighter but at 10.4 ounces it's still a heavy shoe especially compared to shoes like the rincon which i also reviewed today this is 8.4 ounces so almost two ounces heavier this has softer midsole materials has a lighter upper a more flexible shoe in general and all of that brings the weight down in this shoe so when you have a heavier shoe a stiffer last and a midsole material that isn't quite as cushioned and still holds some of that resiliency that all combines to keep the weight on. So at 10.4 ounces, it's lighter, but it's still not light enough. And finally, why the Clifton? So when you have a shoe like the Rincon, and you have the shoes like the Bondi, super light, super cushioned, and the Bondi is much heavier, but also very cushioned for those long days where you're just out there just logging the long miles and training, where does the Clifton fit into all of it? And that's that's kind of been my problem with the last few versions of the Clifton, is where does it fit in their lineup? And what would make me want to grab this over a shoe like the Rincon, or the Mach, or the Carbon X? Which brings me to my conclusion. So the Clifton 6 is probably one of my favorite Cliftons since the Clifton 1 doesn't replace that wonderful godlike shoe in my collection. But I'm also looking at this differently. When the shoe like the Rincon also on the board, and now both of these in my rotation, I would use the Clifton 6 for those long plod days where you're looking to log 15 to 20 plus miles on the roads, saving the Rincon for speed days, days where you just want to have a quick cadence, or the race day. So now you have two tools for your quiver you can pull out when the circumstances need one or the other. So that's where I find the Clifton 6 fitting into my lineup, and it'll be really interesting to see where it fits in yours. But let's get a little bit more specific about the shoe itself. Talk Talking first uh, about build quality. I'm actually really pleased with how well the shoe is built up. The early versions of the Clifton never really lasted very long. The Clifton 6 is holding up quite well. I have about 70 miles in it so far. The exposed midsole and the outsole rubber spots are holding up really well. They're not wearing down super prematurely. I still have lots of cushion and pop left in the shoe. The upper is holding up really well and also still very comfortable and soft. So far, the build quality is impressing me. Comfort wise, the shoe is holding up really well. It does find that balance of cushioned midsole and respect responsive midsole. If you've been disappointed with the previous Clifton's being too stiff and too responsive, you're going to actually find a nice home here in the Clifton 6. But if you're looking for something super soft and cushioned and just absorbs your foot, you're going to want to look towards something like the Rincon. Fit, improved, but not perfect. I talked about that through the width and the midfoot. Getting a good tie down on the shoe has been pretty easy. The tongue isn't super thick, so I haven't been getting a ton of hot spots or fold over in the upper, so that's good. Price at $129, that is definitely tipping that higher end of the price point scale, especially when you have shoes like the Rincon on the market for a little bit less than that. But as far as comparison to previous Clifton's, it's right on par with what you would expect. And finally, looks, uh, it's, you know, fairly generic. I like the looks a lot better than the Clifton 5, which I liked a lot better than the Clifton 4. So we're in the right direction, getting towards better looking Cliftons. And there are some good color versions in it as well this round. So that's good. Bringing us to our final criteria, is the Clifton 6 a buy, try, or a why? This is a solid try. So now if you're going to go out and get the Rincon, uh, you may not need to get the Clifton at all. But if you're looking to add a couple shoes to your rotation that will last you a long time, one for long training runs and one for racing, that's where this becomes a try, if not buy. It's nice to see the Clifton start making strides again. Hey, nice job, you. So my question now turns to you. Have you run in the new Clifton, Clifton 6? If so, what do you think? Or have you rotated in the Rincon? Uh, I'm also really curious about your thoughts on these two shoes and how they compare. In the comments of this video, let us know where you're at with the new Hoka One One offerings. Stay tuned, because in the coming weeks, we're also going to be reviewing some of the new Hoka Trail shoes, which I've been really excited about. You're not going to want to miss that. So if you like this review, make sure you like, favorite, and subscribe to this channel, youtube.com slash the ginger runner. I have social media links. They're there. Don't try clicking them because it just pauses the video. And at the bottom, patreon.com slash the ginger runner for as little as a dollar a month. You get to contribute to everything that we do here. You keep the lights on, you keep the mics hot, you get some cool perks on the back end. Now, I want to remind you that GRGR, the ginger runner global run registration is officially open. All you got to do is go to run grgr.com and you can register for the fourth annual ginger runner global run it's been an amazing thing for the last few years we have videos on this channel you can go back you can watch those and see what it's all about if you have any questions or you want to register go to this website it'll tell you everything you need to know it's october 13th you're not going to want to miss it no matter where you are on this earth let's get outside and run thank you so much for tuning in and watching we'll see you guys next week for more ginger runner videos reviews films whatever train hard race harder and part of the hardest. I know I am. We'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.